All right, hi everyone. So today we're gonna kind of um, combine the last few lectures. We have a singular goal. Um, we're gonna prove the following theorem. So this is gonna be 28.1 theorem. Um, we're gonna prove that an integral domain A is a discrete valuation ring, a DVR, if and only if it's a local Dedekind domain. This it's kind of the, the culmination of uh, the last few lectures. Um, and then we're later going to use this result together with the, the previous lectures to prove that uh, ideals in Dedekind domains have unique factorization. Okay. So let's go ahead and start the proof of this. Proof. First, um, let's consider the case, we'll show that a DVR is a local Dedekind domain. First, suppose A is a DVR. Okay. Remember, there are three conditions um, for something to be a Dedekind domain. Uh, it has to be integrally closed, has to have um, the property that every prime ideal is also maximal, and it has to be Noetherian. Okay. So we saw in Proposition 27.5, right, that this thing is necessarily a principal ideal domain with a unique prime ideal. Um, since it's a PID, it's necessarily Noetherian, right? Every ideal is finitely generated. So there's one of our boxes checked. Um, recall also that PIDs are also UFDs. And we saw at the very beginning of the section on integral elements, um, A is necessarily integrally closed. So we proved that U of D's are integrally closed. Um, and finally, there's a unique prime ideal um, which also happens to be the maximal ideal of A. So since A has a unique prime ideal, so as a unique prime ideal, it is necessarily maximal. is a, a Dedekind domain. And clearly it's it's local because it has a unique maximal ideal, which is also the unique prime ideal. Okay. Okay, so this direction is not bad. The other direction will require uh, a significant amount more work. Okay, so now we're gonna suppose A is a local Dedekind domain.
Okay. Um, since, right, since A is a local Dedekind domain, every prime ideal is maximal. Every prime ideal is maximal. And um, since there's a unique, since A is local, there's a unique maximal ideal. It's a unique prime ideal. Okay. So recall from 27.5 that um, DVRs are exactly, so an integral domain is a DVR if and only if it's a principal ideal domain with a unique prime ideal. So it remains to show, so by 27.5, it remains to show A is a principal ideal domain. And this is kind of the hard part of this problem. Okay, so um, we're gonna outline the following steps and then we're going to work through them one by one. Okay, so the first step, um, basically we're going to show that the, the prime ideal is principle. So the first step, um, we're going to let C and A be a non-zero non-unit. So you probably have to assume something like A is not a field here. And we're going to let um, M be the A module, A mod C. Okay. We're going to choose, so using the Noetherianness of A, we'll be able to choose an M and M so that the annihilator of this element, which I'll define, um, is maximal amongst all annihilators. So it won't necessarily be a an honest maximal ideal, but it will be maximal amongst the annihilators. show, once we define this, we'll show that this uh, annihilator is actually the unique prime ideal. Okay, so this is the first step, is to recognize this prime ideal as the annihilator of some module, and then we're going to show this annihilator is principle. Um, if, sorry, I should make this more clear. So the, there's a capital K, a capital M and a lowercase m, and I'm kind of mixing up the two, so this should be a lowercase m. And uh, this should also be a lowercase m down here. Okay. Um, if M is going to be, so M is some element of here, we can represent this as B plus C ideal C. Then 
will show that uh, the annihilator here, the annihilator of M, it's necessarily this ideal generated by C over B. Okay. And uh, finally, this is so this two will show that the prime ideal is principal, and we're gonna let pi be this guy. Um, for a non-zero proper ideal. A contained in A. Um, we'll consider the chain. A. So this is going to be a chain of A modules contained in K, the field of fractions of A. And we're going to show that um, we're going to consider this chain um, and we're going to consider the chain to show A equals the ideal generated by pi to the m for some m at least one. Okay. Notice that step three um, clearly implies that A is a principal ideal domain. So the result follows from step three. Okay, so these are the three steps that we're going to follow. Um, let's go ahead and get started with step one. So we're going to choose any non-zero non-unit C and A. generated by C. So again, you probably need to assume maybe A is not a field. Or maybe since A is a dedicated domain, it has a unique non-zero prime ideal. So A can't be a field. Um, regardless, the, the case when this is not possible is a triviality. So we're going to let M be A mod C. Um, we're going to note, I guess we're going to consider for M in M, we're going to consider something called the annihilator of M. These are just all the things that kill um, M. The collection of all A and A such that a times m equals zero. It turns out this is a, uh, this annihilator of m, you can pretty easily check that this is an ideal, and we're gonna call s, note that s, this is the set of all um, annihilators of non-zero elements, Set of all annihilators of non zero elements. Um, this is a collection of proper ideals of A. 
So no, it's proper because um, one is never in any annihilator. Um, so yeah, it's a collection of proper ideals of A. Since A is no theorem, I can find a maximal element with respect to it. inclusion in this set. So remember, we're assuming A is a Dedekind domain, which implies A is no theorem. Find a maximal element of S with respect to inclusion. So we're going to call this element, I guess, yeah, choose m not equal to zero such that an order of m is maximal in the above sense. So it's not, again, it's not an actual maximal ideal. Um, I guess it will turn out that it is, but a priori, we don't know this is maximal. We just know it's maximal in this set S. So, since there's a unique prime ideal of A, it suffices to show to show that to show the annihilator of M equals P, the unique prime ideal. Suffices to show this this thing is prime. Okay. So to do this, we're going to suppose let's say a one times. A2 is in the annihilator of M. Um, and let's say, consider A1 times M. So what can we say here? Um, note right, that a1 times m or yeah I guess the annihilator of a1 anything that annihilates m is also going to annihilate a1 times m so this necessarily contains the annihilator of m and so by maximality Maximality of um, oh, I see. I, I have to be a little careful. Um, so if if a one times m equals zero, right? Then a one is in the annihilator of that, and we're done. If a1 times n is not zero, then by maximality of annihilator of m and s, we actually have to have equality here. So what does that mean? Well, notice that A2, so since A1 times A2 annihilates M, A2 annihilates A1 times N. C equals zero. So A2 is necessarily in A1, annihilator of A1 times M, which we just decided was the annihilator of M. Okay, 
So this proves that either A1 or A2 is in the annihilator pen. So we see that this is a prime ideal. Um, so this, this proves step one. Okay, so we've recognized our prime ideal is the annihilator of some element here. Now we're gonna continue to step two to show that this prime ideal is principal. So we're gonna let M, this is the same M, M from above. We can write it as B plus C. So first we're gonna show that this element C over B is actually an element of A. And then we're gonna show that uh, P is equal to the ideal generated by this guy. So note that P, which is now I, I recognize as the annihilator of ideal, since it annihilates M, P times B has to be in C. So this is just translating the definition of what it means to annihilate M in this module big M. Um, since P times B is contained in C, we have in the fraction field, P times C over B is contained in A. So the, the argument here is gonna be kind of complicated. We're gonna show that C over B is basically integral um, over A and then we're going to use integral closedness of A. So to show it's integral, we're going to use basically Dedekind's criterion. Um, since P is an ideal in A, P times B over C, is an ideal in A. Wait, wait, wait. It should be C over B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've got this screwed up here. It should be C over B. Is an ideal. So you can just check this using the definition of what it means to be an ideal. Um, and since since A is an Ethereum, this ideal is necessarily finitely generated. Um, as an A module. So that's, that's what it means to be finitely generated as an ideal. It's the same as being finitely generated as an A module. Okay. We're gonna suppose for the sake of contradiction I guess the same goes for if uh, I replace C over B by B over C. Um, wait. Uh, 
Oh, because I've got this all screwed up. Okay. I now see. They should have been V over C all along. Because this, I can basically, I'm dividing by C in this containment. V over C. V over C. V over C. Okay. Suppose for the sake of contradiction now, so I know this is uh, an A module, and I know it's contained in A. Um, let's suppose I knew it was actually contained in the prime ideal P. Okay, and what can I say here? Well, by Dedekind's, uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm just screwing up here. So really, I shouldn't be telling you that, well, it is true that this is finally generated as an A module. The important part is P is finally generated by it as an A module. So this, um, what do I want to say? P is this finitely generated A module, this finitely generated A submodule of the fraction field. If B over C times P is contained in P, um, then Dedekind's criterion of um, integrality says that this is necessarily um, integral over A. So by Dedekind's criterion, Integrality. I see that B over C is necessarily integral over A. And so, all right, if this thing is integral over A, A is integrally closed, so it actually lives in A. So, why is this a contradiction? Well, this is a contradiction. Um, this contradicts m being non-zero. Since, so, well, if this is an a, m, which is b plus c, is going to be c times b over c plus c, uh, which equals 0 plus c. Because this this is an element of a by high, basically by the fact that uh, this is contained here. And so um, c times this thing has to be. Basically, c times b over c is an element of the ideal generated by c. That's what I'm trying to say. OK, so we've got this contradiction. Right? Thus, this ideal is not actually contained in P, um, so it has to be the entire ring A. This has to be the trivial ideal. P times P over C equals A. In particular, 1 is in this thing. Well, actually, I, I can actually. Uh, um, in particular, um, one is in the ideal P times B over C. So C over B has to be in P. And what's more, this, this equation actually gives me that, uh, P is equal to, uh, just multiplying both sides by c over b, uh, a times c over b, which equals the ideal generated by c over b. Okay, so this this proves step two. This one's 
probably the most confusing step. Um, we used integral closedness here, and we probably also used Noetherian to show that P was a finitely generated A module. Yeah. Okay, so we showed P's principle. Finally, we're going to use this um, kind of interesting chain to uh, to show that um, every ideal is, has a power of uh, every ideal's principle. Okay, so there's step two. Finally, let's move on to step three. So we're going to let pi be this thing the generator for our prime ideal. Okay, we're gonna let, I guess, yeah, so for a non-zero proper ideal, A contained in A, we're going to consider the chain A contained in A pi inverse. And remember, this is a, a, a chain of um, A modules contained in the field of fractions. Okay, so that's where all these inclusions are happening. So let's suppose, let's consider what happens if the, if the chain stabilizes at some point. If the chain stabilizes, basically, uh, Basically, this cannot happen. Uh, uh, then, what does this say? This says that a times pi to the negative r equals a times pi to the negative r minus 1 for some r. Um, and so, what can we do? Well, this means that. Once the chain stabilizes, um, yeah, okay, okay, no mind. I see what's going on. Um, let's say A is non zero. Then uh, A times pi to the negative R equals a prime times pi to the negative r minus 1. Basically, clearing denominators will give me that uh, a times pi to the r plus 1 equals a prime times pi to the r. Okay. And then I can kind of group terms and factor. I guess this is a, an integral domain, and pi is definitely non-zero. So this is going to be a equals a prime times pi, or no, I got the pi on the wrong side, sorry. So I'm using the, the cantilative property here. A times pi equals a prime. What does this mean?
What does this mean? This means that A prime is necessarily in B, which seems fine. But the contradiction should somehow come from So I know, hmm, I know A is necessarily contained in P. I think I need to be more clever in how I choose this A. So So let's let's stop here and let's consider how to choose this A a little more carefully. Okay. So I think I need to choose A something like so um what do I want to say? Yeah, I guess maybe I need to be, so basically um, what I want to say is by essentially Nakayama's lemma, the intersection of all of these, um, there may be a faster way to do this, but this is just what I can come up with on the spot. The intersection over all of these ideals is trivial. This is a Noetherian local ring so we can use Nakayama's lemma and um, so in particular since A is non-zero, A is not contained in one of these so choose um, N minimal with A not contained in, um, yeah, not contained in this ideal generated by pi to the n. Okay, and we're going to let a be an element of this difference. Okay, now I know. pi to the what okay a times pi to the r minus one this is necessarily um, equal to some 
a prime times pi to the minus r. Okay. Notice that, oh, okay, okay, okay. Once the chain stabilizes once, then it's going to stabilize forever. So, so, yeah. okay, I think I see how to do this. Um, now, since, a pi to the negative r equals a pi to the negative r minus one. Well, you can just do this again and say that this is equal to a to the pi to the minus r minus two and so on. So this equality here implies this equality here because, well, I can just, you can just like uh, use basically associativity. Okay, so now in particular, a pi to the minus r equals a pi to the minus r minus n. And now um, so with this a here, um, a times pi to the minus r minus n is going to be equal to a prime times pi to the minus r. And this gives rise to the equation a pi to the n, or sorry, a, a equals a prime times pi to the n. Okay, so yeah, I kind of screwed up this proof a little bit, but I kind of salvaged it in the end. This is how you would prove this. You'd use Nakayama's lemma to prove that the intersection of all these things is zero. Um, probably use Noetherianness here. Um, yeah. Okay. So what I want to say. This is a contradiction. So what does this mean? This means that the chain never actually stabilizes. So since A is an Ethereum, right? This can't actually be, this entire set of chains can't actually all be contained in A. Okay. Since A is an Ethereum, because A satisfies an ascending chain condition, this chain. not be contained in A. Okay, so we're going to choose the smallest n again. such that a times pi to the negative n is contained in a, but a times pi to the negative n minus one is not contained in a. Note that pi inverse times p this is actually just equal to a, so that if a times pi to the negative n 
were contained in P, then A times pi to the negative n minus 1 would be contained in A. So basically, if I'm contained in P, then I can always squeeze out an extra power of pi. And this is going to essentially um, give us the result. Thus, right, since this is the minimal one that's contained in A, I can't actually have this one contained in P. A pi to the negative n is not contained in P. And since this is an ideal, it has to be the unit ideal. Thus, A pi to the negative n equals A. And so A equals pi to the n. OK, so there's this kind of another complicated argument. You, can, you look at this chain, you argue that it can never stabilize. Um, there's probably a better argument than the one I gave down here, but you argue that it never stabilizes. And once you know that it never stabilizes, it can't be contained in A. Um, the whole chain can't be contained in A. Once you choose this minimal one, that can't be contained in P, and so it has to actually, um, A times pi to the negative n has to actually be the entire ring A, which forces that A is this principal ideal. Okay. okay, so the I should say the details of this proof are not super important. Um, the important part is that you know that local local integral or local Dedekind domains are exactly DVRs, and so basically the moral is that local Dedekind domains have a a very high level of structure, and we're going to use that to prove unique factorization of ideals in the next lecture.